This is Python's Paradise, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, we are on February 23rd, 2021. We're hoping for brighter things this time around this year. But, you know, one of the highlights, you know, 2020 was a dark year, but not totally dark for me because I did 30 interviews last year. And one of them was with my absolutely gorgeous guest that I got on here tonight. Yes, one of my highlights was having the original Judith Myers herself on my show. And now I got her on here on Zoom. Folks, I welcome the lovely, the beautiful Sandy Johnson of Halloween on the show. How do you do, Sandy? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you. Of course, I'm a little dark in here, but I tried my best to light this up. I'm just stuck in this little one, just a small apartment, you know, so um, hopefully make the move transition with my brother's wife eventually. So, but I'm here for the time being, but I've been working through the pandemic because I work as a cleaner. That's what I do when I'm due for money. So, uh, so this I do for fun. And this is stuff I look forward to. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and uh, as I have mentioned before we started recording, I was just talking to Joel Bender, the director of Gas Pump Girls, and uh, you had mentioned you wanted some photos and stuff for uh, the conventions and whatnot. And um, yeah, he's happy to, he just said, give, give him a call and uh, you, he'll help, help you get set up for that. I will definitely do that because the fans have been asking for them. So I need to see if I can get my hands on some. Yeah. I find it funny. You and Kirsten Baker were both involved in highlight horror films from that. You and Halloween and she and uh, Friday the 13th part two. <laughs> I know that is pretty funny. <laughs> have you seen her in Friday the 13th part two yet? I have not. No, but I will. I will. I have a lot of um, a lot of films to go through since I was out of it for so long. Yeah. Well, for Friday the 13th, my biggest recommendations mm -hmm. are the final chapter, which is the fourth one, because Ted White, to me, was my favorite Jason of the bunch. I've had him on a couple of times and he was the most terrifying. That was the one with Corey Feldman. But I think... The best one of the franchise is part six, Jason Lives, because it's got a lot of humor in it. Okay. Humor's yep. good. <laughs> well, if you want a good laugh without it taking away from the horror parts of it, right. then I recommend Jason Lives. I mean, you got Horseshack in the opening of the movie, so <laughs> from Welcome Back, <laughs> Connor. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, Jason Lives has got a lot of a lot of great humor in it. Uh, Tom, oh, yeah, Tom McLaughlin, the director, had said, if you're, um, he was told he can put humor, incorporate humor, just don't make fun of the character of Jason. And uh. so, yeah. So, um, he did that and he did it well. So, yeah, those are the ones I highly recommend. But yeah, Kirsten was in the second one. And I think yeah, I well, I watch that one so I can see her. And then I'll watch the other two so I can see the good ones. Yeah. I like part three as well, but um, I know you're not a big fan of gore. Right. So not part, a lot of gore. Part, part six is able to counter stuff with humor. That's why I say. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jason kills, kills some paintballers in that movie, if you can imagine that. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> and that's the funniest scene in the movie. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So um, I, I had some fun with that one. But um, I'm so happy to have you on here tonight, you know, and have you back. Um, I want to start off by saying thank you so much for doing the Doubt Fireface Challenge for Suicide and Depression Awareness. I You're so welcome. Yeah, you keep that video on hand. My brother still hasn't put it up on my YouTube yet, but he's going to. I've got I've got it saved though. But uh, <laughs> but my brother's taking care of our, our parents. Our parents are both terminally ill. Oh, so, yeah. Sorry. So he has been uh, so busy. But 
I remember when you posted that video after the pandemic, the response was so great. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I've been still pushing that, but I've kind of he- took a step back because of the pandemic because uh, I don't want to put anybody at risk, but I just interviewed Jennifer Edwards, who was the daughter of Blake Edwards, who did the Pink Panther movies. And ah. so she'd be delighted to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard from uh, Nick Castle or PJ Souls or Felissa Rose, who you nominated? No, I ask them more than once, but I guess they've just been super busy. Well, we'll get them. We'll get them. <laughs> but um, yeah, Felissa, I got to try to get on the show. I know you would put me in touch with her. I reached out to her twice this year, but didn't hear back. But I'm hoping eventually I hear back from her because uh, you did me a big favor about warning me about a potentially bad project. I won't name that project, but uh, (laughs) I um, was not happy with how that turned out. Um, But I appreciate you uh, warning me about it, uh, about what was going on. And um, uh, so... (laughs) Yeah, I wasn't happy. You're welcome. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I get hit up by a lot of people to do these uh, campaigns. And um, I try to tell people that I think they see me doing this show and I I think they think I'm wealthy. (laughs) What you see, this is where I live. I got a little kitchen out there. I got my cat over here. I got boxes of stuff like I go from my job, you know, I, I work a clean, as a cleaner, like, um, and I think sometimes people don't realize that, you know, so um, I don't mind supporting people's projects, but sometimes people get overbearing. <laughs> yes, and there's so many of them. Yep, yep. So anyway, um, no, but I'm happy to have you back on. You like your cat calendar, your bad cat calendar? I do. I love it. In fact, it's right here. (laughs) Are the cats still being bad? (laughs) Yes. I think I told you I sent pictures of my cats, right? Oh, yeah. I think you did. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. I think it was later in the year when they decide. But uh, I went online and went ahead and submitted a couple photos of them. Okay. <laughs> well, I've never seen a calendar like that before. No, I hadn't either. Never. It's but great. they started popping up here every November before Christmas. And I was like, I started giving them, I still give them every year to my best friend here. And um, I got another guest, actually Nancy McLaughlin from Jason Lives. I send one to every year. And um, I wanted to do something. I wanted to do something for you for Christmas because you did the Doubt Fire Challenge, and it it was it meant a lot that you did that. So, and I knew you had at least one cat, but I guess you got at least two. I do. <laughs> yeah, because okay. <laughs> they 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 were watching the birds the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were for about six days solid. Six days. So that doesn't bore them, huh? No, they've never seen so many birds because of all this horrible weather we've had in Texas and all the snow, which we never have. Millions of birds came and were looking for food. And so we've never, I mean, we always have a lot of birds, but I mean, we had like millions of birds. So they were just like in the window going, (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty funny. Well, you know what? It's funny because we got snow here in New Brunswick, Canada. And I'm sitting here thinking, we know how to handle that. I keep hearing about what cold weather is in California. And I'm like, are you kidding me? (laughs) I don't think they would last here. (laughs) No, no. Well, it wasn't so much that the people couldn't handle it. It's the power grid couldn't handle it because it's not designed for that. And of course we don't have snow plows. So you couldn't go anywhere because they couldn't clear the roads. 
and the everybody i mean we were lucky we had power but many people that i know didn't have power for like five days they had no water it was awful and they're not prepared for that because this is i mean this is where i was born and i have never seen a storm like this so, <laughs> and obviously the power grid hadn't either because it so we lost solar we lost wind we lost gas we lost it all it's <laughs> nuts well did you have to go out and shovel your driveway no i stayed inside with the cats and watched the birds <laughs> so you sent your husband out to do it <laughs> no no he's virtually right now so he didn't have to go anywhere which was good because the roads really weren't drivable well you know what i'm going to give you advice if you can avoid winter driving do because i've been off the roads and icy weather it's not fun i'm lucky to be in town here now so i'm close at hand where i can get to where i need to go clean but um yeah that's that's not fun <laughs> that's not fun to winter drive but no. yeah mm -mm. but yeah we that, huh we had that wreck that had 135 vehicles i don't know if that was on international news or not but it was certainly on u.s news everywhere it was awful did you see any pictures of that no actually you know what no. i tried to avoid the news if I can. Yeah, last I year, know. last year it was all Trump, 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 and then it's all COVID, COVID, COVID. When I go down to do my cleaning, I clean at nights. So um, luckily I don't have to do anything tonight, but I like to stick a podcast in my ear and listen to something <laughs> while go. I'm cleaning, you know. That's I, I tune out to all of this because a lot of it just makes bad blood online with people and people being nasty to each other and um yeah that's not fun no no not that's good. not fun no but uh yeah i enjoyed your doubt for our face challenge and uh your husband dressed up as michael myers <laughs> <laughs> and put the pie in your face talk about that experience yeah that was pretty funny because we were we, we only had one pie, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we needed to get it right the first time. So, you know, we kept practicing and I'd say, okay, now wait till I do this. And then he, he would start to go away. No, 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 not yet. So finally we got it all choreographed correctly and uh, managed to pull it off, but it was, it was fun. It was fun doing it and, uh, and the aftermath with the pie in my face was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. And I made a donation to a charity that you recommended, which was, um, I forget the name of it, was for the tunnels. What was that called? It's called um, Tunnels for Towers. And it what it is, um, mm -hmm. they build homes for people who uh, were disabled from 9-11. Mm-hmm. Well, I made a donation to that. I remember it was tunnels. I knew, I knew tunnels was in the the title of it, but uh, I remember you had sent me the link to that and I had uh, made a donation in your honor for that. So, yeah, Thank generally you. that's, it's great, yeah. It's a great organization. They, they build homes now for um, families that someone in the family was either military or police, uh, any type of first responders that lost their life, then they build a home Mm -hmm. for the family so that they don't have a mortgage to deal with yeah well i do appreciate and i and i, I imagine your husband had fun doing that he did <laughs> he loved putting the pie in my face <laughs> <laughs> i have forgot there was a pie scene in hots there is a pie scene yes and i hadn't seen that in so long because it's not on blu-ray yet i don't think and uh I don't remember. Were you in that? Like the I, pie was. Part? I was. I was on the balcony and they were throwing pies at me. <laughs> <laughs> I had um, um, Lisa London on from that film, you know, and um, she was a lot of fun to interview. <laughs> cool. She's a, yeah, 
she was a lot of fun to interview. Yeah, I'm wait. I like to get my stuff on Blu-ray. I love the Blu-ray transfers, and Hots is not on Blu-ray yet. I don't think. But gas. Pump, I don't even know if you can still find it. You can get it on DVD. Can you? Oh, okay. Yeah. But I'm like, you know, I I try to if I can to get the Blu-ray. Blu-rays are such better, better quality than DVD. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I'd love to get Hots on. Uh, on um, Blu-ray, but uh, yeah, I um, no, I appreciate you doing the Doubt Fireface Challenge, and uh, I gotta say, I don't know whether your husband gets this a lot or not, but he's <laughs> striking resemblance to Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he actually is a professional Santa. <laughs> Uh, now that pieces things together for me you see <laughs> see yeah. this is why michael turned out so bad judith was getting all the gifts she wasn't <laughs> on the naughty list that's it <laughs> <laughs> see here I, here I am making a backstory there you go. <laughs> this was what happened <laughs> right i gotta say i remember you were on Dave McRae live and mm -hmm. um, I have not met Dave. Eventually I want to get him on the show because uh, he's one of the podcasts I listen to while I'm working and I enjoy listening to him. I listened to the interview you and uh, uh, who's it, your manager? Um, Rick and Rick. He's my agent. Your agent. I listened to that and I enjoyed that very much. I love that story. The fact that you're just kind of like off the grid and you had no idea any of this was going on. But here's one thing that stood out to me. Speaking of your husband, I am delighted that he pretty much got the, the bug for these conventions. That he enjoyed it <laughs> as much as you did. It reminds me of the first time I did a convention because I've lived here my entire life. And it wasn't till two, like, I'm going to be 49 this year, which means I'm older than you are. And uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're 39. Oh, of course I am. <laughs> you're 39. <laughs> Forever, right? That's right. <laughs> but I, I'm going to say this, though. Um, Lisa Langwa, who was in the movie class of 1984, invited me to a convention in Toronto, a horror film convention. And... Um, I remember she was on my show twice and she asked me on that second time, she said, what's stopping me from traveling? And then she pitched me to uh, assist her at her table. And I was oh, like, I had to face the idea of traveling and flying and the possibility that's kind of scared me, but I was like, when am I ever going to get an opportunity to assist somebody at a horror film event? I went Flying didn't bother me at all. It's like a bus in the sky. <laughs> and Toronto is so much bigger than Fredericton, New Brunswick here. I'll tell you that. I bet. We don't have subways here or streetcars. Lisa got me trained on all that stuff. I've been to Toronto every year, except last year. because COVID had to ruin that. Right. But I had so much fun. <laughs> I remember that first convention, I was wearing a clockwork orange t-shirt. I'm wearing a Miss 45 one here tonight. You ever see Miss oh. 45? Uh-uh. <laughs> no, it's better than Death Wish. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember I wore a clockwork orange t-shirt and um, there was, a, I was walking around the convention and there was this woman dressed as a demented clown come up to me and she goes I like your shirt and I said thanks and then she rolled her arm up, her sleeve up and there was a clockwork orange tattoo on her arm and oh it was God. and it was just so cool to uh have that connection I'd never been around this kind of environment before and I'm sensing that's what your husband kind of grasped too when he went there huh oh yeah he I went one time without him because yeah, I, I heard like, yeah, my best friend was there and he, I came back and he says, you're never doing that again without me. He said, I was jealous the whole time you were gone. <laughs> so, he 
said she can come, but I'm coming too. <laughs> so yeah, we're pretty addicted. It's uh, the fans are so much fun. I mean, we just have a blast every time we go. Well, you know what? I miss it terribly. We're scheduled for October 2nd and 3rd in Toronto this fall for Horrorama. I'm hoping, hoping, knock on wood, that we have it. Because uh, I miss Lisa a lot. And, um, of course, I've kept in touch with her. I've kept in touch with other people from Toronto. But I miss it. I miss it a lot. And... um, here the theaters are open, you know. I've been going to the movies since July. So Oh, that's good. Yep. Like the only thing that's affected me is the fact that for most of last year I couldn't do my podcast. But now I'm set up right. here like this. The station's still not open, but I'm like I'm glad I got this avenue, you know. Right. But it's just a pain in the neck, this whole COVID thing. And uh, I don't know what it's like where you are. We have phases here. We Red phase means lockdown. Then there's orange and then yellow and then green, you're home free. We were in yellow. And then Christmas people kind of <laughs> put us back into red. Now we're in orange. So we're gradually getting to that spot. And of course, the vaccines are coming out and stuff. And, and right. uh, we, yeah, we have it by the state. Each state decides um, what they want to do. So um, Texas has, in the very beginning, we were shut down like everybody was. And then, it, of course, it was hurting small businesses, something awful. Yes. And so um, the governor decided to start opening back up. So he opened up slowly you know restaurants were like 50 percent capacity and um but we're pretty close i mean now we're probably maybe 75 capacity um but most places are open uh maybe not the bars i'm not sure about bars but um you only need to go there when you go to encounter michael I mean, compared to like New York and California, they've been shut down almost the whole time and people are leaving there like crazy heading for Texas. <laughs> so there, it's the first time I think since, I don't know, the 50s or something that more people are leaving those places than going there. Yeah. And of course, keep, they're, keep they're telling me about this because um, while you're talking, I'm going to get my Halloween Blu ray, but I also want to get the pictures you sent me because I want to show them on here. Ah. Yeah. So keep telling me about what's going on there with actually, I'll tell you this. Since uh, you started going to more conventions mm-hmm. since I uh, last talked to you, right. tell me about some of your experiences. And um, I'm still listening. I'm just going to get the stuff while you're talking, okay? Okay. All right. Well, let's see. I was scheduled for actually seven cons last year. Mm-hmm. And one by one, they all canceled. I was supposed to be going to the UK for, for the Love of Horror in October. Uh-huh. And it canceled. And I was supposed to also be filming a movie there. So I didn't get to do that. Uh-huh. But... I think they're going to um, they're going to shoot later this year. And he said that if I still can't come, they're just going to wait until I can come to finish it. So hopefully I will still get to do that one. OK, but I was very sad that all those cons canceled one after the other. Mm-hmm. But then in um, I think it was. Yeah, it was a, it was the, it was Halloween. I was invited to the Mahoney Drive-In in Pennsylvania. Okay. So I went up there and they showed um, Halloween at the drive-in. And that was that was a blast. So okay. much fun. And it's all the, what is it? The eight millimeter, 16 millimeter. I never can remember which one it is, but it's the old film. It's the old film, the huge reels. Okay. So I got to go into the projection room and watch them load those huge films with Halloween, the original films on there. So that was mm-hmm. just like, wow, cool. Okay. And then a few weeks after that, I got invited to go down to Houston for a Houston Film Fest pop-up market. So I okay. did end up getting to do a couple of cons last year. 
not the seven I thought we're going to do, but two other ones. So I still, I still got to see some fans and have fun. Okay. So hopefully the one this year will um, actually happen. There's, okay. Um, let's see. There's Chicago Flashback Weekend. And that one is in, I think it's the last weekend in July. And then in May is Days of the Dead Vegas. That's the 14th, the weekend of the 14th in May. And then if, if the one in the UK ends up going, that one is the third week, the third weekend in October. So that's kind of what's coming up on the con scene. Still looking? <laughs> Michael didn't get you, did he? I thought Michael. I thought Michael got you. <laughs> no, you weren't paused for too long, I hope. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. That's all right. You weren't paused for too long, I hope. Yeah, a couple, I don't know, maybe a minute. No. Oh. <laughs> well, we have, uh, yeah, I had to put my headphones down there for a second, but uh, I have, I wanted to show these because these were just beautiful. These pictures that you sent me. Look at that. <laughs> I wanted to get a picture of your modeling days and uh, I thought this was great. I like the picture of you with the cowboy hat on and I love the yellow and the browns. So yeah, I wish I could have that hat. I like that hat. <laughs> what, what happened to the hat? I have no idea. Your husband take it? <laughs> no, I was way before him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, we have uh, sticking on this thing. Okay. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta have that one. Yeah. Yeah, I had to order one of your uh, Halloween ones, and I had to order one of your modeling ones, but I also had to get one of the ones that you do nowadays. And of okay. course, I got this one here of you uh, posed in front of the tombstone. Yeah, I like that one. Your own. <laughs> Somebody's yeah. faking their death. <laughs> I love the purple, by the way. It just it just shows right up the purple you're wearing. Thank you. Yeah, I love that dress. Yeah. So um, yeah, when I went to order uh, pictures from you, I um, uh, number one, I had a hard time limiting it. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I got to get a Halloween one and I got to get a got to get a Halloween one, I got to get a a modeling one and I got to get one of the ones you're doing now. Cuz uh how how um do a lot of people order the ones you're doing now cuz you put a lot of work into those. They do. My the the one that I sell the most of is the is the David Burke graphic. Um, okay. where he took took the image of me in, in the purple shirt that's kind of unbuttoned and he's got the Myers house behind me and I'm holding up the clown mask. Okay. Um, yeah, that's my number one seller. Number two, of course, is the iconic one with me, uh, the Michael one. Yeah. And then after that, it's just kind of random. Just people like different ones. They like the cowgirl one. Um, 
yeah, they just pick different ones, but the but the other two are the big ones that go. Okay. Well, and of course I wanted to dig this out. I should have probably had this out prior, you know, but I've been, I got called to work uh, tonight to help move some stuff. So I got here, I got here in good time to get ready for this. But, uh, I, I forgot to pull this stuff out, but Halloween, of course, one of the all time greats and it's easily my favorite horror film. As uh, PJ Souls would say, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> totally. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, no, it, uh, but it's, I'm really glad that you get a taste of the, uh, the convention scenes because they are a lot of fun and, uh, and I imagine you were quite, uh, overwhelmed whenever you first did your first one and got that big, big lineup. Yeah. H40 was, wow. Um, over the top. <laughs> <It was> just... <laughs> crazy the door opened and this flood of energy just came in and just people lined up for as far as I could see and I just thought how can these people stand in line for so long I mean I felt bad to take a break um so really the only breaks I took was to go to the restroom I, I didn't eat or anything because they'd waited so long I didn't, I didn't want to make them wait longer <laughs> and so it was yeah, it was amazing. I'll never forget it. Yeah. So what's your, your husband's experience at these? Because this, this must have been a whole new world for him. Yeah, he was um, he was sitting behind me. Mm -hmm. And he I would turn around now and then say, how you doing? He's going, he was just like, his eyes were like huge. <laughs> and he just said, oh, this is like craziness. And so... Um, yeah, I mean, he loved it too. And then of course now he's met some people because we've made some friends in the horror circuit and they know mm -hmm. him too. So now when we go, he knows people too. So that makes it fun. And and uh, so he, he's he got his friends that come by and say hi. So that's fun. You know, uh, I really glad that um, that he had that experience, you know, it's it's always fun to do these things with people, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, you do a lot of the cons with PJ Souls? I do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have missed her. I didn't, she wasn't at either the ones that I did this year. So I was really looking forward. You know, I always know which one she's going to be at because normally we sit next to each other and she's so sweet and I love visiting with her. And I didn't get to see her at all last year. So I'm hoping this year will be the year when we get to visit again. Yeah, hopefully, you know, we'll get her to do that doubt for our challenge. I could, I, I think, I think I, I could see her doing that. Oh, I could too. Yeah. yeah I'm sure she's just busy. I know Felissa is making like a movie a week or something. So I know she's crazy busy. Felissa's involved in uh, one, if not two movies that my name is on, you know? And uh, like I said, I'm hoping to, to get her on here eventually so I can, Get her to make that sleepaway camp face. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she I've does, heard. Huh? She does it all the time. <laughs> That's what the fans want to see when they're at her table. Yeah. Um, yep. So you must get a memorabilia from Halloween more than anything at your table, huh? Like fans bring up. I do. I've. And I also got a couple really wonderful gifts this year. Uh, Halloween gifts from Halloween fans, mm -hmm. handmade things, very nice. Uh -huh. At the table, of course, they bring um, the Halloween jack-o'-lantern for me to sign. And they, they bring uh, models of the house for me to sign. One of them even played the theme song, was very cool. Um, they bring me all kinds of little statues and things that from long ago that everybody around is going, oh my gosh, I've never seen that. So I know some of them are very rare, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they bring cool stuff. Do you get much stuff from HOTS or Gas Pump Girls? I had um, 
somebody brought a photo that he had, I guess, made from the TV mm-hmm. that he uh, somehow, uh, and he wanted that signed. So I did do that. Um, I'm trying to think. I think someone brought a poster once. Uh, the uh, I think it was the Hots poster to okay. sign. Yeah, but and then maybe somebody brought. So, yeah, somebody brought a DVD, I think, of Gas Pump Girls. Mm-hmm. But I think that's about it. Just a few things. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah. I would. But it was, see, I, what, I didn't do any, really any cons last year. And I didn't talk a whole lot about that before last year. Mm-hmm. So I might get more in the future. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, I was talking to Joel Bender, the director of Gas Pump Girls, before I come on here and um because i know you wanted photos from the movie he is quite overwhelmed that people are talking about gas pump girls and he's quite happy about that (laughs) yeah no he told me to tell you to give him a call tomorrow tomorrow afternoon sometimes he's in california so um so so he's four hours behind me and i think he's two hours behind you you're stuck in the middle Right. Yeah, he's two behind me. <laughs> Four behind me. <laughs> yeah, that's the ways. That's that that's a ways, yep. I've I don't think I've ever in my life, as far as I know, unless my parents went somewhere when I was young, but I don't think I've ever been to the States. Huh. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to get homesick traveling until I went to Toronto. It was the first time I didn't want to come home. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah, to go there. I'm, I got to try. I got to talk to Chris Alexander because I want them to bring you to Horrorama. I get a lot of people I've interviewed ask me to, to try to hook that up. And I can only make the suggestions, you know, uh, it's a, that's all I can do. Um, right. Yep. Yeah, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping we still have it this fall. So, because uh, that's been a lot of fun. I've attended three of those and one Toronto Comic Con. So, um, yeah, we don't have them here in New Brunswick, really. <laughs> Too right. small, I guess. I oh, think well. your borders are still closed, right, to the U.S.? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. But anyway, um, so talk about how you've been handling the COVID situation over the past year. Well, I have been handling handling it mostly from home mm-hmm. I um I try not to go anywhere if I don't have to mm-hmm. and if I have to then obviously I wear a mask and try and stay away from people and we take hand sanitizer in the car and do it every in and out of the car stuff um it, uh, Danny has to be out more because he works in town. He's teaching virtually, but he has to go in sometimes for labs or meetings or stuff. Mm -hmm. So he tries to do the the shopping and those kind of things when he goes out. But uh, yeah, it's mostly just been staying home. And I think maybe we've had, we've had two or three gatherings in the last year, two with family and we just social distance. One was camping and that was easy. Mm -hmm. Then at Christmas, we just, aid in different parts of the living room and everybody cooked their stuff normally cooked together but instead we cooked and brought it <laughs> like a <Okay>. pot <laughs> but, yeah, it's different but I mean it's okay I mean I miss friends and I miss uh, my family and stuff so I'm I'll be glad when uh, we get the shots and we can move on you know what? I yeah, it's about due time because this thing has already outstayed its welcome. This whole pandemic. I, I yep. Yep. Um not fun. But um but yeah. So when you do the uh convention scenes, and I know I think I asked you this before, but since you've done a few since I've talked to you. Any interesting, unique things you've been asked to sign? <laughs> um, well, let's see. I, sh- I signed a shirt with someone wearing it. 
I um, signed lots of masks. I signed the Michael's clown suit, the little clown suit. Uh -huh. And that was hard because that's very slick material. So, but I did do it. Um, can't really think of anything. I mean, knives and stuff, but nothing really unusual. Mostly just masks and knives and jack-o'-lanterns and posters and things like that. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you did uh, one where um, I can't remember the, the actor's name who played young Michael. Um, Will Sandon. Yeah, Will Sandon, that's it. What was that reunion like? <laughs> Um, it was great. I mean, I hadn't seen him uh, since he was a, a little boy. <laughs> and so now he's all grown up and uh, a handsome man. So it was it was fun to see him and visit with him. And and uh, that was the only movie he ever did. Mm -hmm. So he he went to work at some, I don't know, electronics firm or something. And uh, so that was kind of interesting that he didn't do any more films. But yeah, that was it. I think that was, um, that might have been New Jersey. Okay. When I saw him the first time. How does he like the cons? Um, I think he likes them okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think so. He He's not a, a big talker. Okay. So well, certainly would, not, certainly not in that film. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, one on one, he will talk to you and stuff, but he, but he's he's not a real kind of overt personality. Mm -hmm. Not he's very nice, but just a little quiet. <laughs> so it, he's kind of hard to read if he was having a wonderful time. Oh, okay. Or, but I'm assuming he was. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we know PJ Souls has a wonderful time. <laughs> she, does. she does. She has a wonderful time. She is a delightful, a delightful person, and the fans love her to pieces. Who else do you see there out of these movies? Um, uh, Nick Castle. He's usually the next table down, and then James uh, G. Courtney is after him. Mm -hmm. So usually we're all there together. Uh, in one little area. So that's always fun. They're, they're both wonderful. And then um, uh, Nancy Loomis, she, she was there. She hasn't been in all of them, but she was at, I think the last two that I did. Okay. And she actually told me something I didn't know when I met her. She said that when I'm on the couch with my boyfriend, the clothes that I'm wearing were her clothes. <laughs> and I didn't know that but it was funny because when I look at those clothes before I knew that I kept thinking I don't remember those clothes and I knew that they had said everybody wore their own clothes yeah in the film you know because it was a low budget so everybody just, and I kept looking at those thinking I don't remember those clothes and <laughs> she that's why I didn't remember them they were her clothes <laughs> So uh, that was kind of a bit of a trivia that I didn't know. You know, whatever happened to the guy who played your boyfriend who had the quickest sex ever? <laughs> whatever happened to him? Have they ever tried to get him at the cons? <laughs> yeah, he, he was actually at age 40. Was he really? He was. He was at the table next to me. Um, David... Oh, what's his name? He gave me a book. He wrote a book. I might have put it away. A book, a, a book about quick sex. <laughs> um, no, surprising. Here it is. His name is David Kyle Foster, and he wrote a book called Love Hunger, and it's about his addiction, I think, to sex and drugs and stuff. And I actually haven't read it yet. I, I'm so far behind on books that I need to read. But yeah, he was there. And it was great to see him. And um, he did say he probably wouldn't do another one. I, I guess he's kind of a hermit. He just, he lives, it was, I think like Colorado somewhere, either Colorado or Alaska, one of those two. Um, okay. Just kind of in a cabin in the woods and just doesn't like 
to be uh, out. <laughs> he just likes oh. to be there. Okay. So that was a rarity for people to get his autograph for sure. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't even know that uh, he had done a con. That's uh, something news to me today. Yeah, I think it's probably the one and only. I don't know. That's why I heard about Jamie Lee Curtis, but Sean Clark is working on that. <laughs> Wow, that'd be something, wouldn't it? Yeah. Speaking of Sean Clark, I had him on the show in January. And it was a delight to chat with him. And uh, he's supposed to have uh, Andy Mat Mat Matichak on The Thing with Two Heads, a podcast he does with Chris Nelson oh, um, nice. next week. And I, he said, if anybody has questions, post them here. And I posted tonight my question i said that i was interviewing you tonight for the second time but i said the first time that i had interviewed you i had talked about the fact that andy bears a striking resemblance to young judith and i and i asked him to bring that up up to her when they have her on because that is kind of interesting that she kind of does kind of put me in mind of judith myers and I know you, you could see that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Did yes. The role that she has in Halloween 2018 is a role that, that if I were young, mm -hmm. I would have loved to play. It's a great role. It's a great mm -hmm. part. Yeah. So when you and your uh, husband went to the premiere for Halloween 2018, like, I know you've kind of been off the grid for the entertainment industry all these years. What was it uh, like seeing this film with all these people? Wow. I mean, the whole thing was just nuts from getting out of the car. It was like the paparazzi. Um, mm -hmm. And they were just like photographers everywhere yelling out my name and look over here and look over there and we finally got off the red carpet and went inside of course it was Grauman's Chinese I don't know what they call it now that's what I grew up with it as mm -hmm. and um, of course it's always been an amazing theater so just being in such a nostalgic historic location and beautiful theater and being right in there with the whole um, cast and crew and watching Halloween on this huge screen. I mean, it was just very cool, very cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that would have been, uh, that would have been fantastic. What do you think of Halloween Kills coming up? We're all hoping it comes to the theater. Um, I don't do streaming. I got a TV here, I watch my Blu-rays on it. That's about it, you know. Um, there's all this reality TV stuff. Just I don't have time for that, you know. And it's so I don't do the streaming thing. But I'm hoping to be to see Halloween Kills at the theater. So are we gonna see any Judith flashbacks in that, or or do you know? No, I don't think so. They, um, you know, they finished that. Uh, what a year and a half ago now or something, mm -hmm. or at least a year ago, I guess. So no, I didn't make that one. I'm still hoping maybe the next one. Halloween ends. That would be nice. Since I, since I was the beginning, it'd be nice if I could be in the ending, but. <laughs> you know, one criticism I have, I wish that like these ones take place after Halloween. I kind of wish it took place after Halloween 2 because Halloween 2 was the same night and you would think Lori's trauma would be greater after the whole ha ha uh, hospital massacre. Right. That's where more bodies racked up there. Um, <laughs> and I think they did it because of the whole brother-sister angle thing. And I'm like, I do I think they could have wrote around that, but I, I yeah, I, um, I would like to, I, I wish they kind of kept those first two canon, you know, as opposed to just the first one, because um, 
I don't know what they're going to do with Halloween Kills. I guess they're supposed to do something with Dr. Loomis in this one and flashbacks. I'm interested to see what they do. Oh. Yep. But I really um, think they should have kept the whole night for Halloween 1 and 2. Have you seen Halloween 2? I have, yes. Yeah. It segued very nicely off that first film. Yes, it did. It's also a very good one. Yep. But um, I think that they uh, they should have left that canon. And how interesting would it be he gets to burn again in Halloween 2018? <laughs> All you have to do is light a match. <laughs> but I enjoyed the 2018 film a lot. And um, I love what they did with it. I find it also interesting that uh, David Gordon Green directed it because he's the guy that did like the Pineapple Express, <laughs> so he's Seth Rogen movies, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was interesting. I thought he did a good job with it, but like I said, yeah. I would have kept the. If they didn't want the brother sister thing right around it somehow, you know, so that would have been my thing, but I. So I don't know what they're going to do with kills, but I am looking forward. I hope to see it in a theater. So that's not. Yeah, me too. That. I hope they don't release it on streaming. I don't do streaming. That's that's a thing with me. You know, I just I just don't. But I, I guess we don't we'll... have the bandwidth for it. Well, even the Thirteen Fanboy, which I'm a co-producer on, is supposed to come out August thirteenth, and I'm like. I chipped in on that. So, I mean, I kind of like to see it in the theater, you know? Right. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, but um, no, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the finished film. Um, did you meet Andy Matichek? Um. Yes. Just briefly, just, you know, quick introductions. I met I met the cast briefly at at the uh, after cast after premiere party. Because I was wondering if she even put together the resemblance between uh, you and her. I don't know. She's a beautiful lady. Well, that's the question I asked uh, Sean Clark <laughs> when uh, for the, the their, when they have her back on the show. So. <laughs> Good. Yeah, ho hopefully that that works out. But uh, nonetheless, we um, of course. Um, oh, what was I going to ask? <laughs> I got brain freeze there. <laughs> Probably COVID. But nonetheless, uh, all these years later, and uh, I always find it funny. People have often said, "How could she not know all this stuff was going on?" You know. But you know what? I can believe it because my dad was like that, you know, dad never, he was always deep into work and he would, he would know unless we brought something up, he would know about these um, things going on. And um, do you still teach or are you retired? No, I'm retired. I, uh, I haven't taught in about 15 years, I guess. Are you going to teach Michael? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you feel that's a lost cause? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it would be a dangerous job. <laughs> Loomis was trying to teach him for 15 years. Of course, he spent right. se seven of that trying to keep him locked up. <laughs> <laughs> Which is their version of expel them. <laughs> right. These pictures that you do, I know I, I see them every time you do a new one. Um, where do your ideas come from, like to, to set them up? I love it when you have the, the pink uh, um, top and you got the skirt on and the, the, the socks that go up to your knees. <laughs> you really <laughs> capture that. Huh? The Judith outfit. Yeah, did you get that from Nancy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I actually put that one together myself. Yeah, 
you didn't raid her uh, closet. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so talk about putting these pictures together. First off, when does an idea, like how do you come up with an idea? Now I know it, you, you see the film and you come up with this and that, but um, like whatever one, I don't know if you got one of mine to do next, but how does it come to you what you want to do for a picture? Well, I, I kind of brainstorm um, locations. I kind of think of locations first and what, what could happen in this location? Mm -hmm. You know, where could Michael be or uh, what scenario could take place here? Or, or could this look like a graveyard? So I kind of look at the locations first. Uh -huh. And then I think about um, things in the movie. Is uh -huh. there something I could do that's kind of a takeoff of different scenes in the movie, you know, like the cord around the neck and do, um, people, do, do young fans ask you what that's all about? Because I mean, I know I grew up with the cord, you know, but today, you know, it's <laughs> today it's these. <laughs> right. right. Um, I think most of the young fans have uh, older fans as parents. So I think they <laughs> probably have already explained it to them. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so, and then sometimes fans will usually before I'm going to do a shoot, I put it out to the fans and, and ask them if they have any ideas, something they might want me to do. In fact, the one that you showed with me laying on the ground in the purple dress, mm -hmm. uh, one of the fans had requested that I do one where I was holding flowers. So, okay. Yeah. So that was a fan idea. Mm -hmm. um, and there, and there have been others, the, um, and then some of them at this last, um one that i did at the myers house north carolina of course he it's the myers house right mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's, there's there's the clothesline and there's judith's room and there's the staircase so i mean it it just had all kinds of opportunities so yeah so it's just a combination it i have i'll find a particular outfit that gives me an idea or location or um just some crazy idea will pop into my head and I don't know I just have a brain like that <laughs> talk about being at the Myers house all those years later um well of course I wasn't at the Myers house in California I was at the one in North Carolina okay but the outside of the house is an exact replica Mm -hmm. And the and Judith's bedroom is in the same location and everything. So it was it was awesome. It's a great house. And um, was your was your co was your comb laying out there so you could comb your hair? <laughs> no, there isn't a vanity in there anymore. I guess <laughs> at one time he had one in there, but he took it out and put in a bookcase or something. But it was fun to look out the window. And uh, we did some shots there that you probably saw some of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bathroom window from Judas area was where I'm looking out down at the clothesline with Michael down there. So yeah, that was a, that was a great house, a great shoot. And uh, Kenny and, and Laura, the, uh, the people that lived there that built the house, so nice to uh, let us come in. They only let, um, their friends inside the house mm -hmm. because um, they used to let other people in and somebody stole something. Oh. So unfortunately, after, I know after that, they, they uh, just people they know can come in now. So we were very honored to be able to stay there for three days and sleep in Judith's bed and just uh, <laughs> enjoy the house. It was really, really special. <laughs> I got to ask, um, going back to your husband, what does he think of your movies? Um, I guess he likes them. <laughs> he watches them with me. <laughs> does he love Halloween? He does. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Has he seen Hots or Gas Bump Girls? What's the third one I'm, I'm missing on the top of my head? Uh, jokes my folks never told me. Jokes my folks never told me. Okay, has he seen those? I showed him those about four months ago. Did he have a favorite? 
Um, probably, probably likes Gas Pump Girls. Well, I mean, he likes Halloween the best, yeah. but probably Gas Pump Girls. Yeah. No, Gas Pump Girls, great. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I find this must be al also quite, I mean, I know it's been uh, something quite different for you when uh, you were discovered, but it must be something quite different for him as well. And I'm glad he's very supportive of you on it as well. Yeah, I mean, we just, it kind of hit us both broadside. <laughs> so well, yeah, he's been very supportive and I love that he goes with me and that he has a good time, that he's making friends too. So it's a well, good Sean, thing. Sean Clark, uh, I brought this up to him and he had said that uh, you guys got the bug now. Yes. <laughs> you guys got the bug. I take it you met Sean. I did a couple yep. different times, yes. Yep, Sean does a great job. I had him on in January. Um, the reason I wanted to interview him is because like with me being a cleaner and stuff like this, like I don't, I do a very regular eight hour job, you know? So the fact that I'm doing this is kind of surprising to me that I'm able to talk to you of all people, you know? <laughs> but with him, all I kept thinking about was this guy used to work at Spencer Gifts. How do <laughs> I, I wanted to talk to the guy who went from Spencer Gifts to doing a con with Jamie Lee Curtis. Right. Uh, and I really wanted to get that story, you know? And I, I had the same conversation with Bobby Heckman as well, because Bobby Heckman also works a regular job and um, and uh, is doing a movie that I'm part of and <laughs> from a producing standpoint, mind you, but <laughs> I didn't have to leave here. <laughs> <laughs> but um i wanted to get that side of him so th that was interesting speaking of which you do have some movies to promote on here uh and i've been asked by the director of uh, is volpus is that what it's called uh, Vault. Uh -huh. volps okay Vault. i did make a small donation to that uh, i'm not able to make big chime in donations because I'm just not in a place where I can. But um, I know that the director had asked, and um, I said, I can do a little bit. I'm just not in a place where I could do a whole lot. <laughs> but right. I haven't donated to a film since Z Dead End last summer, which Felissa Rose is part of. And I had to kind of take a step back because, uh, you know, paying rent and all the other things, you know, I get a keep that up the plan right. on my, the plan on my end is um like i said my brother is dealing with my folks but the plan is we're supposed to get a, a place where he and his wife live upstairs me and my cat live downstairs and uh we plan to get solar panels and mining equipment so we can kind of live off the grid so to speak so nice. that yeah that's the plan and it's been kind of uh gone sideways since covid you know but that's the plan so that's why i'm shelled off in this little spot here but um but yeah that's why i haven't been able to make big donations to these movies but uh but i understand you have a role in vaults um talk about your role and talk about working on the film Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for donating to the film. I appreciate that. Um, I have a cameo. Uh -huh. I play uh, David's mother, and I actually filmed it uh, here. So I didn't. I did not have to go to Hungary. You mean David's sister? Uh, no, his mother. Aren't you thirty-nine? <laughs> Uh, oh yes always <laughs> I'm a very young mother <laughs> but it's uh, I think it's going to be very good film the mm -hmm. the prologue to it I think I sent you that I thought it was very good okay and, and so I watched 
he first sent it to me, uh, the, the prologue to watch, and I really did like it. I, I thought it was, I mean, it just, the lighting was good. The, the photography was good. The acting was good. I liked the premise of the film, you know, getting even with people who abuse animals. So I was uh, in on all of those things. <laughs> and then he said, he came back and said, okay, well, would you like to do a cameo in the next episode of it? So that's how it came about is I really loved the first one. So I did the cameo in the second one as uh, one of the victim's mothers. Okay. Okay. No, I, uh, he, he contacted me about that and uh, talk about where oh, I can't even remember his name. Uh, Cause I remember he had the last name I'd not seen before the director of uh, Volps. It's Benjamin, and I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even want to butcher it. <laughs> no, I don't want to either. But uh, <laughs> he reached out to me, and, uh, and I, I told him that I don't have a lot I could give, but I did give a little bit. So, uh, but... He did mention that you were in it, and I think that was uh, pretty much why I, I donated because you're part of the film. But, but uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, well, um, cool. no, I it was fine. Yep. Um, but uh, and you got another one. Come, let me see off here. Um, See, exit full screen here because I know you've got some other. Oh yeah, creeps well, at the I gym. Have... Yeah, creeps at the gym. Uh, that's the UK one that I didn't get to film yet because it's in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was going to do for the love of horror and then go on and shoot that film. Well, of course, neither of those things took place. So. Maybe this year. I'm hoping. I don't know yet. I know they're all shut down too, but we'll I never, see. I never saw this credit Surfer Girls here before. Did you do a movie called Surfer Girls? I did. It was a 3D film, long time ago. I I did not like the film. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I did not like the film. I was uncomfortable doing the film. They just, I I didn't like anything about it, so I don't usually talk about it. But yeah, okay. I did. We don't have to talk about it. I just never noticed it there before. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, what do we have coming up this year if things go according to plan? Okay. Well, we have uh, Chicago Flashback Weekend mm -hmm. in July. We have um, Vegas Days of the Dead in May. And if a miracle happens, we have For the Love of Horror in October. Uh, that is so far. I know that a lot of the cons are setting their dates later this year, just hoping that there'll be a better chance. So hopefully there'll be some more because yeah. they're, they're not finalizing them yet. I'm hoping so, because like I said, I didn't take any time off work last year at all i was like you know what's the point in taking time off work to <laughs> come home <laughs> it's, like, it's like my cat deals with me too much you know <laughs> 24 <laughs> hours might be too much yeah he, he ran and hid here somewhere because i think he knew i was coming on here because anytime he's around oh. me i <laughs> where did you come up with your names your cat star uh starbuck and lottie like what um, did you come up with those for names? Well, Starbuck, I was, they're big cats, they're Maine Coons. So I was trying to think of like a big name, you know, and Starbuck just mm -hmm. sounded like a big boy. And then I, so I went from Starbuck to Starbucks, which made me think of Latte because she's, a, she's a big girl, but she's a very sweet, petite little girl. So I thought Starbuck and Latte would be a good combination. <laughs> yeah i enjoyed the video where they're watching the birds you know they seem to be quite <laughs> enticed <laughs> looking out yeah. the window yeah do you want to promote any charities on here um well i'm always 
uh, promoting uh, Jude St. Jude's Children's Hospital, mm -hmm. Shriners Children's Hospital, and uh, Wounded Warriors is a good one, mm -hmm. as well as um, uh, Tunnels for Towers. Those are those are the ones that I mostly contribute to. Yeah, Tunnels for Towers. That was the one that I uh, I donated to. So uh, yeah, once again, I have appreciate very much you uh doing the doubt fire face challenge that was to me the funniest one i have seen that was a, that was a very very creative you know what made you think of doing it that way um well i knew that a lot of the people that would be watching it would be halloween fans mm -hmm. so i thought you know, a Halloween fan, we should probably have Michael in there. And uh, Michael is a stalker. So <laughs> that just seemed a good way to do it. Can you imagine if uh, instead of killing people, Michael pied people? Could you imagine what the <laughs> Halloween franchise would look like in 2018? He'd be in the psych reactric ward because he had a <laughs> pastry fight. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> He hasn't spoken a word in, in so many years, but boy, when the ice cream cop truck goes by, we can set something. <laughs> oh, that was great. I appreciate you doing that, you know, and uh, uh, that was a lot of fun to see that. We'll keep after those other three about it and uh, eventually nail them down. I know you're on Cameo as well. I just just learned that recently you get hit up a right. lot for that um quite a bit i do um i've had different things people want me to promote a new business or wish somebody a happy birthday or congrats for one thing or another so always fun to do i should get you to do a cameo sometime i i should do that I had a couple of doubt for our face challenges done through cameo, but I had to step back from that. Cause I don't know where, pe like, I know what our COVID situations like, but I don't know what their COVID situations like. So maybe they can't get to a place to get a pie, you know, but um, I've had a couple people do it, including Leah Thompson from Back to the Future. She could get a pie, but she used an ice cream and she stuck whipped cream on it. And <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got a big laugh about that. <laughs> so she had the sense of humor about it, but it got me thinking, I was like, gee, you know, I'm not thinking about what things are like where they are. So I had to hold off on it, but those that haven't done it yet, I told them just hold off till after COVID finally takes a hike, you know, and right. do it then. Yeah, we don't want people risking themselves, you know, and um, the death toll for COVID has not been big here, but I know it's been big some places. So we're hoping that hey, you go get the vaccine when it comes out. I will. I was supposed to get it last week. We both were. And then the storm hit. And everything shut down, and so they haven't called us again yet. Since your husband dresses up like Santa Claus, doesn't he have a sleigh? Can he get get there? Does he have some reindeer? <laughs> no sleigh. Is he ever going to dress up like Santa Claus for the cons? Boy, I'm putting some wicked ideas out there. <laughs> I don't. I don't think he wants to be an evil Santa. He's a good Santa. He'll be a good Santa and you could be Judith Myers. <laughs> that that that's why Michael got jealous. <laughs> he got yeah. coal, he got coal in the stocking. <laughs> well, you know what, Sandy? It was so glad I was so happy to have you come on here tonight, you know, and uh and um come on here and promote these things. And um I hope to see you uh getting back into the movies. Uh has it been a major struggle, like going back to try to, uh, I think you said you had an acting coach and whatnot. Has that been easy for you or was it a struggle just getting back into that? Um, well, I mean, it's a lot of work. I'm enjoying it, but mm -hmm. it, it is a lot of work. I, um, I've been trying to get some different ones done. I've done a, uh, a funny one as far as a monologue to put up on my uh 
IMDb page. And then I did a kind of a serious one. And now I'm working on a serial killer one. So <laughs> that would be the next one that goes up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? We look forward to seeing you and more things. And, uh, and um, I hope, I hope, knock on wood, I can see you at one of these conventions, you know. Uh, I've only gone to a couple of different ones. It's kind of a, a baby steps for me in terms of getting here and there. But, but I hope to see you at uh, one of these uh, conventions because uh, I think that would be a lot of fun and, and uh, get this thing here signed. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, I look to that. Absolutely. And uh, you enjoy that bad cat calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Thank you for that. You, you know what? I wanted to, you know, I, 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 I was like, uh, Sandy would like this. So I sent a few of those out this year. And I think I've never seen a calendar like that before. I think it's the best calendar ever. That because <laughs> every day has got something, you know, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's right here on my wall. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed that, you know, so yeah, that was my special thank you for the Doubtfire Face Challenge. I really appreciated that, and uh, I don't take that lightly, and uh, I'll have to reach out to you at some point on Cameo to, get to, to do a plug for my show on there, because I think that would be, uh, that'd be great. I could stick that up on my YouTube, and there you yeah. go. Be great. There you go. But I am going to get you to do a plug for my show here anyway <laughs> at the end of this okay. interview. Yeah, yeah, because we're about to close off here. Just just state your name and uh, that you're Judith Myers and Halloween, and you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise out of New Brunswick, Canada. You got all that? Oh, gosh, all of that? <laughs> yeah. Hang I'm on. Giving, I'm giving you the most hard time since Michael. <laughs> okay greg gilbert yeah say it again okay greg gilbert python's paradise python's paradise new brunswick new canada yeah. Is it New Brunswick? Yeah, New Brunswick, Canada. You guys say Canada, I guess there's a New Brunswick in New Jersey. And I'm like, uh, really? <laughs> well, I guess people mention New Brunswick, they're not talking about here because nobody knows where here is. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all ready? I'm ready. Go for it. This is Sandy Johnson, the original Judith Myers from Halloween. And I've been visiting with Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise from New Brunswick, Canada. There we are. Yeah, and maybe, you know, next year, you know, when you got some more projects going, I'd be happy to have you back. I'm always happy to talk to you. You're a delightful person, and I'm really glad that you're getting into these cons and uh, enjoying the conventions. And uh, yeah. I always look at seeing what you're doing every day. So uh, Thank you. I'm glad I'm glad they found you. <laughs> <laughs> glad they found you. And in the meantime, we got to somehow get Nick Castle, PJ Souls and Felissa Rose on that doubt Fireface challenge. We'll uh, we'll work on yeah. them. We'll work. Well, maybe on at them. the next con I can talk to him in person. I haven't seen him in person yet since then, so that's yeah. always easier. Well, I got to reach out to Flessa again, you know, and uh, see if I can get her to respond. Because I remember when I reached out to her after the whole film situation last year, that was early last year. And I'm hoping she hadn't forgotten about me. But last year, I wasn't in this position. So, so I'm hoping. Right. To, yep. Yeah. If worse comes to worse, I might need your assistance on that. But if... Uh, <laughs> But that'll be uh, that'll be a last resort if I need that. <laughs> All, right. All right, Sandy, thank you so much for coming on here and you blessing us. Out. Yeah, and blessing us with your presence and uh, you. keep doing what you do. And uh, yeah, maybe you should do one of those pictures where you get the cats with Michael Myers. 
the cats as Michael Myers? No, the that cat, the cats with Judas, and have Michael Myers in the photo. Oh. <laughs> Okay. What, you think the cats will be afraid of that? No, not cats. No. Maybe Michael Myers has got treat back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Sandy, for coming yeah. on here. It was so nice to talk okay. to you. God bless you, and Thank you keep yourself safe and keep yourself out of the cold. Okay, you too. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Talk to you soon. Absolutely. God bless. Bye. Bye-bye.